Uh, this question is from Chris001122. As one of the best financial geniuses of the 20th and 21st centuries, do you believe the United States can ever begin to stop our dependency on debt? If you believe we should, what are some ideas you might have to help balance our budget and begin reducing our debt? If any single person could help solve this, I believe you might have some good ideas on this. Look, I am not a financial genius. I have never been a financial genius, and I have no aspirations to being a financial genius. Did I make that clear? Uh, despite that. Despite that. Uh, <laughs> let me say a couple of things. Uh, First, we've struggled to pull ourselves out of this ghastly mess from the 2008, 2009, almost failure of our financial system, uh, almost entirely by monetary policy, Federal Reserve. We have done nothing in fiscal policy. We could have raised taxes to help or cut taxes to help if we have done neither in any material way. There have been a few, a few tax increases, I think, in that period, not enough to alter the, alter the balance. So we're going to have to have, though, every economist is going to tell you, at least they told me this in 1949, <laughs> that fiscal, the best way to deal with crises is to have fiscal and monetary policy work together. And we have not done that here. So how do we get out of it? How do we start to cut that debt down? Well, first, a massive, say, tax increase, huge tax increase to start running as surpluses would be an economic disaster for the country. So it, the way it's going to have to work is if we continue to get growth, and I think we might be able, lucky enough to get 25 or 3% growth in GDP, uh, we can work the ratio of debt to GDP down just by not letting the debt grow. And if the GDP grows and the debt doesn't grow, just by holding it steady, you won't do a lot of damage to the economy, and the ratio will gradually come down. It is large, and I would say historically alarming, but I, th I think in today's circumstances, it's something that, that you have to be conscious of taking it down by maybe some combination of rising taxes, although the demands of our, you know, of our budget, you know, all these things about helping, you know, having college free for students and, and helping the people that need help in our country of whom there are many and who, and who deserve help, uh, who we must have, uh, we must help. We're going to have some kind of a revolution around here which is the last thing anybody wants, to balance all these things in a federal budget in, a, in an affirmative, quickly changing, sharply changed dynamic is simply not going to happen. Um, you know how the Federal Reserve is balance sheets, I think it's $6 trillion or something, never done anything, anything like that before. Uh, how is that going to come down? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, and how, how do we have, in a, in a political system, that we are almost stymied every time we do, do something in government. Nothing much happens down there. Uh, how are we ever going to do even the small things I'm talking about? You know, a more, a more intelligent tax system that can raise a little more taxes, enough to pay for the things we have to spend money on, or that I believe we have to spend money on. And it's just a, it's a, it's a conundrum, but there are you know, answers statistically. But what will actually work, what you can actually implement, is really a problem. And because uh, we don't implement very much, and, and nor do we have much of a consensus. You know, we have kind of two Republican parties at the moment, and uh, probably two Democratic parties. It looks like that from the primaries, anyway. And it may even get worse. So we have we have a lot to answer as Americans. Uh, you know, the, they say we get the government we deserve, and I think that's accurate. We being broadly defined as everybody. But I constantly remind people. You know, I was chairman of our Constitution Center down. And, Philadelphia when it was being built. And everybody used to say, democracy, democracy. I said, we are not a democracy. We have never been a democracy. We are a republic for whom the republic <laughs> for which it stands. Um, that's what we've always been, where the, the voters elect their most able representatives to represent them. We don't, I think we're slipping a lot. You could argue that democracy is responsible for what's going on in the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, almost in the Democratic Party too. And, uh, you know, I won, and Brexit, British thing, was basically a plebiscite uh, where everybody got an equal vote, where they had a flying clue 
as to what leaving the, the, the European Union would mean to Britain. And obviously most of them didn't. So you get you know, issues about feelings, issues about emotions, issues about who, who talks the loudest and gets your ear last, and that's how you vote. And uh, none of that is healthy. So I worry about that. And I don't see clear answers in front of us. You could argue we never have seen clear answers about the problems we face. But I, I think this nation has always had the, tr the strength to finally um, do what's right. As Churchill said, uh, Americans always do what's right, but only after they've tried everything else. 